what's happening now when there are actually freezing assets of Russians. Who is going to now keep assets in dollars? Nobody. Not central banks. This is a high risk. Please join us for our next live stream Sunday, April 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll go over current events, past guests, and of course, gold and silver news. Once again, our next live stream will be Sunday, April 17th, 9 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Egon von Greyers, wealth preservation, asset management, gold and silver expert, joins us today. Egon is a world economy risk analyst expert, and since the 1990s, Egon has been actively involved in financial investment activities, including mergers and acquisitions and asset allocation consultancies for private family funds. And this led to the creation of Matterhorn Asset Management back in 1998, an asset management company based on wealth preservation principles, and his gold Switzerland division was created to facilitate the buying and storage a physical gold and silver for private investors, companies, trusts, and pension funds. We're delighted to have Egon here as a return guest. It's time to saddle up and silver up for Egon von Greers. Egon, welcome back to SBTV. How are you doing? Thanks very much, Patrick. Well, good to see you again. Yeah, I'm doing fine. I mean, the world is in a mess, uh, and uh, you know, it's going to be probably tougher to, to survive. Uh, this was going to happen uh, for all of us. But it, we've been prepared for quite a while. So um, the, the, uh, I mean, you, you can't prepare for everything, of course. But nevertheless, uh, the risks have been there always or, or, or for a very long time. So we, we know that uh, these kind of things will happen. You can never obviously prepare for war totally. But the war is part of, of, of the cycle also. So sadly, um, yeah. And, and um, we're just seeing the beginning of, of, of a troubled world, world sadly. Yeah, I guess we'll start off. Um, I'm pretty curious. How are things in Europe with the Russia-Ukraine conflict going on? Uh, things happening such as sanctions. Are you seeing maybe higher prices, inflation coming in, shortages of items, you know, maybe talks of rationing? Well, you know, obviously parts of Europe uh, is in a mess because Europe is totally dependent on, on Russian energy. Uh, and, you know, you can't bite off the, the hand that feeds you. Uh, and, and on the one hand, so all of Europe, including the U.S., of course, but the but, um, U.S. is less affected, but all of Europe is uh, sanctioned r Russia. Uh, but Russia you know, provides Germany with 55% of their energy, for example, gas uh, primarily. And, and many countries in Europe get 100% of their energy uh, in the form of gas from, from Russia. Uh, so, you know, and, and obviously... You can't then, on the, on the one hand, stop or the flow of energy, which stops your country functioning. Uh, and and on, the, on, on, on the other hand, you know, therefore, sanction um, sa Russia. So it, it's an impossible situation, especially uh, when you look at the, um, the, the Germans who closed down for, you know, the green energy, uh, which is crazy, of course. The green energy has met, 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 met and, uh, and the green parties uh, forced Germany to close down virtually all of its uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, I think they have three left now, but they're they intend to close those too. Um, and so they have no alternative. So and it's incredibly mismanaged energy situation uh, by, by Germany. And as I said, other countries, uh, Czech Republic, for example, and they've got hundred percent dependency on, on Russia, uh, and many many other, especially East European countries. Um, so therefore, you know, they, they, they are absolutely are in a total mess on, on, on the one. And Russia, of course, uh, this is playing into their hands because, I mean, they can now dictate the situation or, or uh, they turn off the energy to, to Europe. Uh, and of course, that's uh, as the, as the uh, head of, uh, um, of um, a company called BSAF, SF, which is the biggest chemical company in the world, a German company. He said, you know, we don't get any energy from, from uh, Russia. Uh, that's going to be a disaster for the German economy, totally. And so, so, so clearly energy prices are going up, food prices are going up. Uh, we are not seeing real shortages yet, uh, but I expect that to come too. 
Um, and, and of course, as I said, it's not just energy, but a lot of the, the food is coming from the combination of Russia and Ukraine. A, a lot of the food, the food products are coming from there, plus fertilizers, of course, for, for uh, the whole world. Um, so, of course, it will have consequences, you know, and this is what this is what leaders today don't understand, you know, if you study history, but there are always consequences of actions. Uh, and what I mean, obviously it's always you, the U.S. who starts all of these actions. Because I mean, no way defending the war, of course. Uh, the, the war in itself, and, and well, any war is horrible. Uh, but you know, the, everybody is blaming Putin. Of course, yes, he started it, but he has been warning the world for the last uh, eight years since 2014. Uh, you know, when there were, we had there was in Ukraine this maiden revolution which meant that uh, a Western-backed uh, coup, uh, backed by the U.S. and, and also part of, uh, some countries in Europe, uh, basically pushed out the, the Russian-friendly Ukrainian leader and then put in a, 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 a West-friendly, Western-friendly uh, leader. Uh, and that led to uh, basically NATO starting to surround um, uh, Russia, and, and I mean, I've shown in one of my latest articles, I showed maps of of NATO in in, in the late uh, 1900s, and then uh, NATO today, and the plans of of NATO countries joining uh, in the future. And of course, they're totally surrounding Russia, and that's one thing. You know, the Russian bear doesn't like to be cornered, uh, and 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 Russia has basically said that that. You know, we can't accept that, that all of these, and including that, of course, Ukraine wants desperately to join NATO, also, which uh, Russia can't accept either. So what I'm saying is that, um, I mean, w war is unacceptable in, 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 uh, at any time, but Putin warned the world for such a long time. And had there been one, even one competent and strong leader and statesman in the, in the Western world, they would have, he would have taken up negotiations with, with uh, uh, Russia or Putin. But there's not a strong leader at all. And of course, the US sadly now has no leadership, uh, neither a president nor a vice, vice president who actually uh, leads the country. Um, and therefore, uh, the world is in a mess. But as I've said many times, we get the leaders that we deserve. And we are now at the end of, of a major era, as I see it, and, uh, and, an, and an era which is the end of, of uh, of uh, a, lo a long period of economic decline uh, and, uh, as we know, debt increases and currency debasement. Uh, and, and the very end now brings, sa sadly, very poor leadership. And that's what we see. And that's why this situation is not going to be solved quickly, because everybody is blaming everybody else and nobody says, let's sit down, uh, because e even Putin has offered to sit down. So. Uh, that's why this situation will continue, but that fits into, uh, Patrick, what we've discussed so many times. Uh, we are at the end of this era now. We're going to get with the currency debasement, the money printing will lead to inflation, eventually, as I see it, hyperinflation. Um, uh, uh, so that was, you never know what the catalyst will, will be, and the catalyst now, uh, which is not the reason for the problems, but the catalyst, well, the latest catalyst was, of course, the war. Um, and, but that fits into the the, the, the pattern totally, um, and therefore this will continue. You know, I, I don't know if the war will finish or not. Probably not for a long while. Um, and in the meantime, uh, you will get this inflation uh, going up. And of course, I, I don't think I don't think they're going to uh, totally turn off energy from Germany. Can't can't uh, live with that, as I said before or Europe can't live with turning off uh, energy from Russia because there's no alternative for the next five years at least, there's no alternative. Um, and therefore, you know, we'll have a situation where, where there'll be t war of words and, and war of weapons. Uh, but in the, but I'm, I think probably some supplies will continue, but it's a wonderful situation also that, you know, which uh, the Americans never saw for Russia that, that they can demand now payment in rubles, of course. <laughs> which is uh, and linking that to gold. So so now now we have the, you know the, the, this is so, so so that's what I said. You can't actually you know when you start threatening somebody who's sitting with so 
75 uh, trillion of, of um, natural reserves, more than any country in the world. You know, there will be consequences. Um, and you know, I think uh, the Western world would do a lot better to try to negotiate a peace rather than to send weapons to, to Ukraine, in my, in my view. But that's, that's where, where we are, and that's, as I said, fits in totally uh, with uh, the, the economic uh, prospects that we have seen for the last 10, 15 years at least. The, uh, and um, so we're going to see the hyperinflation, we're going to see the money uh, crashing, and we're going to see, which this is why your company and our company are doing what we're, what we're doing. We're trying to help people to preserve wealth because the, the, the stock markets will crash. Uh, property markets will ca crash, bond markets will crash, and currencies will continue their journey to zero where they're soon there. And therefore, gold and silver will, of course, reflect this. Um, um, and um, so most people, sadly, in the world don't understand that. Uh, but, uh, of course, we're, we're here to help. But more people will understand in, in now in the coming months because gold, gold and silver, of course, will, will start moving quickly up. Yeah, excellent points. But we're definitely going to touch on a few of those in, in just a bit. Uh, you, you brought up something else where you had mentioned the, the Czech Republic 100% dependent on, on Russian energy. Um, I believe it looks like Hungary is starting to buckle. Uh, Germany is definitely dependent on, on Russian energy as well. A uh, question I have is for now, for today, Europe seems pretty united in these sanctions against Russia. But with the situations for sovereign countries, the, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Germany. Is there a chance that these countries may may buckle and have to look at sovereign issues more than a, a unified issue? I think that's exactly what's going to happen in the world. Uh, uh, we will reach a point where it'll be every man for himself. You know, the, the globalism is now uh, going going to um, slowly or, or, or faster than we, uh, we could ever expect. They're going to die. Uh, and there people will be isolationism again, uh, definitely. And people will think about themselves because, you know, when there are problems and, and there, there, are, there, there are sanctions or, or rationing, etc., and, and lack of food for people, uh, they're not going to worry about the world. They just worry about their own, their own situation. And, and, and people will demand, if you take Czech Republic, for example, they, they will demand from their leaders uh, to, to get them food and get them energy. Um, and therefore, they're not going to care about the rest of the world. So you're absolutely right. And that's what we're going to see, the trend away from all of these big corporations and, and, and international organizations, etc. They only work in good times. In, in, in bad times, is every, every, every man for himself, uh, and, and because especially, as I said, there's, there, will be, there will be political pressures in all these countries. And if the leaders don't give, you know, food is the number one thing. And that if it, empty stomachs is the worst that can happen for, for any political leader. Empty stomach means uh, uh, civil war or, or revolution or people protesting first, maybe peacefully, but then also uh, by, by taking action. So therefore, yes, absolutely, you're right. It's, it's going to, the situation is going to change, and especially in Europe here. So therefore, it's going to be a, a, an economic mess uh, and a political mess. Um, and that's going to last for a long time. Yeah, you know, Egan, a, another crack that uh, or tear that's going on or happening is with, of course, the, the U.S. dollar. You, you've pointed out uh, before that Russia could indeed sell oil to China for either yuan, perhaps even gold. And should Russia sell oil in either of those or anything other than U.S. dollars, what is the impact for the U.S. dollar going to be? Well, uh, you know, Russia is in the wonderful situation. That on the one hand, uh, major parts of Europe are totally dependent on their energy and also on their food. Um, and on the other hand, they, ha they have a friend in the East that, that happily takes their food and energy also, uh, which is China, as you said. So they actually, so, so what, what, what uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, and the rest of the world didn't realize is, is that this is how they, Russia is sit, sitting in a very strong position. Of course, their economy will suffer um, and they, because everybody's economy will suffer. Um, uh, and of course, we all want the, 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 the war to, to be stopped. Uh, but in the meantime, Russia has choices. Um, and you know, the, the, what the U.S. has done, I mean, the U.S. has 
dictated the, the, the monetary and, and uh, policy for the world for, for quite a long time now. And of course, we know we had a few years ago, we had FATCA, which basically means that anything uh, paid in dollars will, will be reported to the US and controlled by the US. And now, and what's happening now when there are actually freezing assets, uh, freezing assets of Russians, telling central banks to freeze, uh, free, not just of the Russian government, but of individuals. Who is going to now keep assets in dollars, for example? Mm -hmm. uh, nobody, not central, central banks, not individuals. I mean, we wouldn't, even if I will tell our clients, don't keep any money in dollars, it's a high risk. Because the, the, the thing is that you, uh, the U.S. is still in a position to use this weapon and the, and the world is still listening to the U.S. But the U.S., as, as I've pointed out in many articles, is a, is a bankrupt nation, of course. Uh, you know, they, they, they've been running deficits since 1930. Uh, I mean, they're just in 71. I mean, the debt is up 60 times um, and uh, GDP is up just over 20 times. So, so they're printing more and more money to survive. Um, and that bubble, as uh, I pointed out many times, and as we have discussed, you and I, Patrick, that bubble is, is now uh, in the process of bursting. And that means also bursting, obviously, uh, b bursting of the US economy uh, and, and all, all the inflated assets, but also bursting of, of the dollar. And as we know, I mean, the dollar is already down 98% since 1971. When, go, when go, the gold window was closed, and um, uh, so the ne the next the, the next fall now uh, to zero is going to happen, and, and there's only two percent left, but that two percent is hundred percent from here, and that's going to happen, and dollar is going to collapse. Nobody will want dollars, of course. To be, you know, every, every country now, Saudi Arabia talking about uh, trading now with, with China and Yuan, for example, and, and everybody's going to go away from the dollar. Nobody will want to touch the dollar. So from, from having been the currency that everybody wanted to hold, hold in, in the world and, and everybody just, you know, wherever you went, it was dollars. That, but it's going to be the opposite. Nobody will want dollars. Uh, the, the, the problem is, of course, there is no currency to take over from the dollar. Not, there's no one single currency that will become a global currency for quite a while, at least. So there'll be lots of different currencies. So it'll be the yuan, it'll be the euro, um, it'll be the pound, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, maybe, especially now since R R Russia is already li linking the ruble to gold, maybe gold will also play a much more important role. If you're enjoying this interview with Egon von Greyers from Gold Switzerland and Madhorn Asset Management and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and giving us a thumbs up to let the algos know you want more content like this. And if you want to learn more about systemic wealth protection, please do visit us at www.silverbullion.com. That is G. That's another great point because, you know, it, it's been said that uh, trade wars turn into currency wars, currency wars eventually turn into hot wars. And, and we're kind of seeing the trade wars and currency wars and, and on the fringe of, of a hot war. Is, let's say, the backing of national currencies with gold perhaps an answer to bringing in trust in a currency that then leads into trust in trade to perhaps squash what's going on yes I, i'm uh, i've never been in favor of having totally 100 percent gold-backed uh, currencies linking like the russians are doing now so you can trade you know linking it to to the, the ruble is fine it's not actually totally gold backing but the, the problem is if if governments if you start now with currencies being 100 percent gold backed uh, then government will start manipulating it again in a different way. I don't, I, I don't like governments controlling gold. I, pr I prefer uh, what we, we call free gold, i.e. gold that is actually not controlled by anyone uh, and that the market determines the, the price of gold. Um, that's, of course, not the case at all now. But I, I think <clears throat> that what we're seeing now with the, the uh, Russian actions uh, and as a linking it to the ruble, that will uh, will eventually mean that the demand for gold will increase, and it will destroy the futures markets in gold. And and uh, you know that they they have been manipulated for such a long time, and they need to be destroyed. That's the only only way we can get free gold and gold moving uh, w without uh, massive uh, manipulation by, by what 
ultimately it is really the BIS through the, the through the uh, central banks and 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 the, and the bullion banks. So so I I think that that's where when we get when we get that move uh, uh, and and the failure of these uh, futures market, which I've been saying will happen for for quite a while, and it's taking longer than all of us um, could have ever imagined. But it will happen. You can't have you can't have a, a real money being backed by several hundred times of, of paper uh, gold, uh, and that's what you know. That's what's happening at these futures exchanges. So, and of course, when that bursts, you know, uh, combined with a, a demand for real physical gold, and uh, uh, then the the, uh, the those futures markets are going to collapse so quickly that no one can imagine. Um, and of course, now with you know, Addison McLeod has written about you know, golden uh, gold held by Russia and, and China um, could be a lot greater than we all, all expect, and and I think that's the case too. I, I uh, what I've read and un, and understood and studied is that China certainly has more than a, you know, a couple of thousand uh, uh, ton, tons of gold. They probably uh, Alistair says twenty thousand tons. And if you read back historically, what they have, you know, they what what they have actually um, collected, uh, and especially of their own gold. Of course, they never they build up. They're the single biggest producer in the world, and they don't export anything. And they have gold historically also. So. Uh, it's. I, I wouldn't be surprised if China has twenty thousand, and, and whether Russia has the twelve thousand that Alice says um, uh, could could be the case, you know. But the, the they uh, c- combined, I'm sure that they have much more than the U.S., which clearly doesn't have its eight thousand tons at all that it declares, uh, or certainly not in an unencumbered for, form. It's probably been leased out, and they'll never get it back. Uh, so, so, so that's why the power will also shift. You know, the, uh, and, and it's interesting. We can get to this gold era now, even if there isn't, uh, uh, as you said, even if there isn't full gold backing of currency. But gold, you know, gold will be. That's where the power will lie now. Because you could, you could see that Russia says, okay, when if you want to buy, you can buy in rubles or you can buy it in gold. Uh, you're not going to buy it in in, in paper uh, paper money that you're just printing. But we're not going to take that. Uh, so it's it's um yeah it's, it's from that point of view and, and you know ha- helping people to preserve wealth by buying and storing gold in itself you know buying and storing gold is 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 you know, a simple exercise but it, but the, the the complexity of this is actually trying to predict what's going to happen and and, and understand the, the what forces are going to affect this um, and therefore also. Uh, helping people to, to move in the right direction, and I think we will. Uh, that was going to be an, an interesting uh, game now in the future uh, to to predict uh, what what is uh, going to happen to currencies, to countries, etc. Because there will be a massive shift, and as, because and, but that shift was always clear. You know, commodities have been been too cheap for too long uh, and and uh, oversold. That's it, co- commodities in general. And of course, this inflation or hyperinflation uh, that uh, we expect, uh, that's going to come through commodities primarily, not going to come in property or in, in stock markets or in bond markets because they're already in bubbles. So they will deflate relatively uh, whilst um, you know, the commodity side, that's where we're going to see the real food, energy. That's, and we're seeing it already. And that's going to... Uh, Go up dramatically uh, in, in all of these things, which will be a disaster for the world. And, and because already, we, I mean, we have there are shortages. Um, I think I, I before already before Christmas, the UN Food Agency was saying that, that you know there are already massive shortages in food before this happened. Right, so right, yeah, that will, yeah. So that will lead to famine. That will lead to problems. So so um, and you know. It'll be it'll be a, a very difficult time for for the world ahead, um, but you know we will we will continue to to try to navigate and and, and tell people at least how, how, what they can do and and how, and how they can protect themselves. Uh, but everybody can't, of course. Most people in the world are poor, so they won't be able to protect themselves, and there will be misery. There's no question about it. Yeah, navigate is a is is a good word. Uh, 
Because a few weeks back, we saw Jerome Powell come out and, and he mentioned in, in a type of a testimony that he said there is the possibility of a dual world reserve currency. Is he kind of signaling or, or showing the white flag here or, or does the Fed, you know, they're really kind of acknowledging that the dollar is losing its importance? You know, the problem with when you become uh, when you become a politician, when you're elected into some official post, and I, and, and I call central bankers politicians also, because that's what they are. They can never. And, and when you are uh, head of a central bank, for example, you can never tell the truth ever. Uh, and so so every politician lies because it's the only way that, that he and, and, and his country or, or her country can survive. Um, so, uh, of course, the central bankers, of course, they're not that stupid. Uh, uh, they will see what's happening in the world. They will see. If you're head of the Fed, you will see the amount of money that that, that uh, central bank has created in the last 50 years. Uh, and you will see that, that the country is going downhill quickly because because even they must understand that the money that they're printing has zero value, absolutely zero value. But uh, the the world has had a vested interest uh, um, uh, in the in the well, in the last let's say twenty years, especially of, of actually uh, making that money, uh, uh, making the rich richer with that money, and that's worked wonderfully well for them. And of course, South Africa bankers and central bankers. Um, uh, they, they have done what they can to, to grow the economy in a totally artificial way. Uh, because, and, and if you take the US as an example, you know, the health of the US economy is uh, sadly defined in, 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 in the level of the stock market, nothing else. Uh, and of course, if the stock market does well, then you know, people borrow more money, they invest more money, etc. So, so, and the bubble gets bigger. Um, and of course, the Fed has seen this. We have known for a long time that you cannot create and print money to the extent that uh, the Fed and other central banks have done without creating inflation. Now, for uh, for a number of years, uh, especially in this century, uh, that money has not gone into uh, consumer prices because the, the money hasn't even reached the consumer. It's it's reached the the investment markets. So therefore, we've seen massive inflation in, in investment markets, in stock markets, property markets. Uh, and, and of course, that's not the way an economy grows. grows uh, economy grows by, by investment into industry. But you take the US, as we know, I mean, they've actually moved their industry to a great extent to, to, uh, to Asia instead. Uh, so so uh, so we haven't seen sound growth in the U.S. now, except for in, in markets. And but now, you know, eventually, as I said, money printing uh, and increase in money supply, as the Austrian economists define, uh, will lead to inflation, and that's what's coming now. And now we're going to see, as I said, the the uh, commodity inflation in particular, uh, and uh, which will, as I said, that will hit. Ordinary man, the man in the street, and for him, you know, already now, you know, most people can't afford the increase in energy and in food, and that's not just poor people; that's ordinary people. You know, when, when energy goes up by by fifty percent or sometimes hundred um, percent, and food also goes up by, you know, now I mean, it certainly goes up by twenty percent right now. It's going to go up by, by more. Uh, although it's not reflected yet in consumer prices, but it's going to happen soon. Uh, and uh, you know that people won't have the money. I mean, it, it, it's so the world is actually going into uh, now a, a real misery, uh, both for the West and, of course, for the developing world. Um, and uh, sadly, we've been predicting this for a while. Uh, it's now happening. Uh, and uh, governments, of course, never forecast this because if they did they wouldn't be elected um and that's a dile the dilemma because they can never forecast bad news uh and they can never prepare the people for it but of course now the fed for example which is always after the curve now they're saying that that they are going to uh that they're going to cut, cut down the, the balance sheet by 95 billion 
uh, a month. That's now when the disaster starts and, and, and the time when, based on their theories, they should really print more money. Uh, but now all of a sudden they're starting the inflation fight because the if officially, uh, uh, official inflation figures are rising. But as we both know, inflation has been, been going up for a long time because the money pr printing is inflation in itself. Uh, but but they, they haven't reacted to that. Now they're reacting and people are going to suffer dramatically. As you know, you know, I've always been saying I'm totally against central banks. I mean, and central banks fulfill zero function. They create uh, disasters. They, they create uh, you know, cycles that are much greater in, in both the, the, the peaks and the bottoms than they would be if, if you let the natural forces of supply and demand determine the cycles. Um, so, so um, therefore, uh, you know, it would be much better just not to have central banks and let everything uh, ha happen uh, by, by the, the laws of nature, which are much better at, at regulating money uh, that, than central banks are. You know, you can't have, as we have now, unlimited amounts of money printed at zero cost. It doesn't make sense. You know, that's only because of, of fake fake. Uh, policies uh, that, that this is happening. You know, otherwise, if you have a lot of borrowing, interest rates would be 10 or 20 percent, not zero percent. Um, and therefore, people will borrow less. But now you said interest rates are zero and people borrow uh, uh, as much as they can uh, to, to, to actually to, to make a return on, the, on, on that money. Um, and, and it's, as I said, anybody would, anybody. Uh, understands that this wouldn't work, but central bankers, sadly, as I said, they become politicians and they get caught up in, in their own nonsense. And that nonsense is, is now uh, coming home to roost, um, and it's going to lead to some financial, a lot of financial disasters in the world and human disaster. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Egon, you you did bring up a good point about central banks and uh, how they create cycles. I mean, we had the Fed. Uh, basically, they're holding up the markets, and now we recently see uh, ex-Fed President Bill Dudley come out and say the Fed needs to bring down the markets. Um, this whole cycle going back and forth with the Fed, it's it's been going on for a while. But the other thing now, additional to this that are complicating things, is has the genie been let out of the bottle where the U.S. dollar will only be from here on out moved away from and not moved back into? I think so, and as you said first, you know, the, I think the, the, uh, the Federal Reserve is now realizing that they got a rein in inflation, uh, like Volcker did um, uh, in the in the early nineteen eighties, uh, and so it seems to me now that they're not going to. They, that's what they say. They're not going to care about the stock market. And supporting that at, uh, every time it dips, uh, because you can't, you know, that that stock market needs money all the time. It, it's like a dr druggie that needs to be fed with more money all the time. But now they're withdrawing money instead. So, you know, th and that fits totally with the picture of, of uh, what I see the stock market doing, because the stock market is now, it's already started. Is peaked and and it started the decline. So we had the first decline, and now we had a bit of a reaction up. And now we're seeing, you know, the the the, the transport, for example, the Dow, Dow transport index, some of that that's crashing. It's cra crashed what seven, seventeen is it seventeen percent in, in 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 the last ten days or whatever. The massive crash. Nasdaq came down yesterday also. So so the 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 stock market fall, which is inevitable after. And such an incredible bubble that we've seen for such a long time. That's not happening. And I think the F Fed is now telling us that they've actually more or less given up in trying to support the stock market uh, because now they're going to focus on inflation. So, but as I said, they, they, they're be always behind the curve. So they're doing this at the worst possible mo moment for the economy. Uh, they should have done it a long time ago. They shouldn't have printed all of this money. They shouldn't have had zero interest rates, but they did. Um, uh, so now the reaction will be much greater. I mean, I expect in the next two to two, uh, four years, so maybe it will happen probably a lot quicker, um, a, real, a real stock market crash. You know, and that is, 
there's no reason why that won't be as big or bigger than the 29 uh, crash, um, uh, which was 90% in the US. Uh, because I mean, the situation now is, is much worse. The bubble is much greater and, and the, the debt situation is much greater. So, so I, I, that, that's what we're going to see. And this is the same with, with bond markets, you know, bond markets with zero interest rates are, and, and, and high bond prices. Um, that, that's, uh, the, the debt is going to collapse too. So all asset markets are going to now come down together. And, and um, sadly, it'll be a, a horrible situation for the world. But that, that's, that's what you get at the end of eras and, and end of, of uh, I probably, well, it is the biggest speculative bubble era in history because we've never had it basically uh, around the world before. It's never been global. Now it's vir virtually every country is in the same situation. Uh, and that's uh, totally unique uh, in world history. And that's why so there will be no one to save another country before we've had, when we had um, bubbles. You know, let's, let's take the, the, the basket cases of Argentina or, 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 or you know, the smaller countries that have collapsed. Uh, then the rest of the world could just write off the debt. Now there, there's we can't write off the debt, so this debt uh, will will just um, have to implode. And when debt implodes, of course, the asset prices implode at the same time because that debt is supporting assets, um, and, and therefore, yes, we're going to see a, a, a disorderly re reset of proportions that's never been seen before in history. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, the word unique. Egon, are we in or starting that period of what's known as the crack-up boom? Uh, the crack-up boom has already happened, in, in my view. We know crack-up crack, 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 crack or, 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 or melt-up means that, you know, the, the thing, or, or, as I understand, that, that means that things are going to go up first. Uh, uh, we've seen that. Uh, in, in, uh, now it's, we, we are in starting the implosion. Um, the boom is finished, it's totally finished. Uh, and therefore, we're going to see uh, the, the, the most massive implosion of asset values that, that the world has ever experienced, it's combined with, which makes it more disastrous, as I said before, combined with inflation in, in, in commodities. Um, uh, that's well, both food and energy. So, you know, it's the worst possible situation that could hit the world. Um, and, and therefore, I said, there will be a lot of suffering. It will be inevitable. And there won't, you know, there won't be any money printing that can save this anymore. That's, that's done. They've tried that. It didn't work. So what we're going to see now is the consequences, which anybody who, who you know, who is, who is not absolutely stupid uh, uh, and illiterate, could have forecast, uh, but nobody wanted to forecast it. Uh, and so therefore, it's now happening uh, and no one, no one can do anything about it. Um, and um, that's, again, that's why we've got to have a political turmoil also, as I said before. You know, political parties will come and go and, and, and leaders will come and go because everybody will be blamed for it. And everybody who's not in power will promise better times. Um, and uh, but no, but nobody can orchestrate better times anymore because that's been tried now for at least fifty years, and it didn't work by, by printing yourself to better times and borrowing yourself to better times. Works for a while, but the consequences, as I said, are, are disastrous. All right, Egon. You know, what? last question here. At this point in history, should the viewers? see gold as an investment opportunity or perhaps an insurance or a combination of both? Well, you know, you, you and I have discussed and we discussed beforehand also that, that we always seen it and, and our clients also, we have the typical wealth preservation client who buys a gold primarily and some silver, but mainly gold to put it aside, forget about the prize, don't worry about it, but actually that they're having it uh, as insurance and as wealth preservation. Uh, but but uh, I think now gold will also uh, relatively outperform virtually every asset class there is. So that we, you will actually also make money on gold. And of course, 
sail, but when it moves, we know that it moves twice as fast or three times as fast as, as gold. So although it's not for weather, <laughs> widows and orphans, silver, you know, the, the volatility, it's wonderful when it goes up. But when it corrects, it's it's you know you uh, people won't sleep at night. So therefore, we always recommend that you have more gold and silver. But 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 nevertheless, yes. Yeah, so so gold and silver will now perform the function both of insurance and wealth preservation and enhancement of your wealth also because relative they are relatively now so undervalued and they'll be in high demand. And if you combine that with us as a uh, uh, the the futures market um, is integrating and, and, and eventually uh, uh, disappearing in, in precious metals, uh, then, then you, you, know, you will see a, a price rises that uh, you can't imagine. Com- uh, and you know, combined with, as I said, inflation and hyperinflation. So, so, but you know, we don't think that people should look at the price. We should just look at it as, as, as primarily wealth preservation. Uh, but you will get uh, the added benefit of, of wealth enhancement also. Egon von Greers, before we wrap up, can you let the listeners know more about how they can follow you and the services you can offer them? Yeah, so we we, uh, we write, um, I write articles and do in- interviews that we, with people like yourself, you know, who are, you know, I think you, uh, your interviews are excellent with, with lots of good people. Uh, so and and um, I write uh, regular articles uh, at, at least once every two weeks, and I have a colleague Matt Matt Pipenberg, who also does. And 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 really, you know, we've been for years. I've been writing for twenty years. We've been forecasting this. It's taken longer than I expected, but uh, nevertheless, so people uh, can find those articles on our website, goldswitzerland.com. Um, and and also, of course, we we help uh, people uh, preserve wealth by by, by um, Holding gold and silver in uh, in uh, vaults, primarily in Switzerland, uh, we have the the biggest uh, private gold vault in in the world in Switzerland, which is a James Bond like experience in this in in, in the mountains. So, so um, and uh, so people are welcome to come to, to, to our website called Switzerland.com and we'll help them, um, or just to come and read our articles, which uh, that is are definitely uh, you know they they have been. Forecasting what's happening, and and uh, you know this is a, this is just a start. People need people need to read uh, material outside conventional wisdom, which is no wisdom at all, which goes is the you know it's the mainstream media that are not forecasting anything; uh, they're just reporting. So it, it's uh, you know, there are a lot of good writers are, around the world, but I, I think people should re- read. Uh, on the internet, this alternative uh, analysis like our our own, uh, because uh, you learn a lot more from that. Egon von Greer's great points all the way through. We appreciate the time you've given us, and I, I truly do hope we can do this again soon. Patrick, it's always a great pleasure to speak to you. Thanks very much. That was Egon von Greer sharing his views on the economy, geopolitics, and precious metals. For more info on Egon, please visit www.goldswitzerland.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share to let the algos know you want to see more of our content. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.